In this tutorial, we will take a look at the procedure if the forward cargo light illuminates during flight. Procedures shown may not be current or airline specific. Do not use for real life flying. We are flying at 36,000 feet when the master caution light illuminates. The pilot flying immediately states, My aircraft. The issue is shown on the first officer's enunciator panel with the illuminated word doors. The purpose of the enunciator panel is to alert the pilots to issues out of their field of view, in this case the illuminated forward cargo door light on the overhead panel. A look at the doors panel shows the forward cargo light is illuminated. The pilot flying therefore calls for the forward cargo checklist. The master caution light can now be pressed to extinguish the light. After checking the QRC, if applicable, the pilot monitoring finds the procedure in the Quick Reference Handbook or QRH. The procedure does not appear under C for cargo door, so where can it then be found? It is listed under F using exactly the terminology of the light, forward cargo. The pilot monitoring reads the procedure title as well as the condition it's for. Cargo door checklist, condition. One or more cargo doors are not closed and secure. Do you agree? Once the pilot flying agrees, the checklist is followed. The checklist starts with a conditional question, depending on whether the pressurization is normal or not normal. A look at the cabin altitude panel shows the pressurization is normal. Returning to the checklist, we choose the path for normal pressurization, which states to continue normal operation. The four black boxes underneath indicate that in this situation, a door light illuminated, with normal pressurization, the checklist is complete. However, let's find out the difference if the pressurization was not normal. In this scenario, the checklist has us go to step 2. Step 2 has us put on oxygen masks, followed by establishing crew communications, which is as simple as Can you hear me? Loud and clear, you mean? Got you loud and clear. Step 4 has the passenger signs switched on. Followed by step 5, which asks if we have reached the planned cruise altitude or not. We are at our planned cruise altitude of 36,000 feet, so choose the second condition path of the question, which has us go to step 6. Step 6 directs us to set the landing altitude indicator to 9,000 feet. Step 7 also has several paths, depending at what altitude our minimum safe altitude is at. Ours is at or below 9,000 feet, so we choose the first option. We are directed to go to step 8, which states to descend to 9,000 feet. Step 9 has us maintain a cabin differential pressure of 0 psi by limiting flight altitude to 9,000 feet. We then are directed to step 15. Step 15 has us plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. That brings up an interesting point, what is a suitable airport? Factors include weather, available approaches, length of runway, emergency equipment, among many other considerations, it may turn out that the destination is the nearest suitable airport, despite other airports closer by. Finally step 16 informs us the oxygen masks may be removed at or below 10,000 feet. The four black boxes underneath indicate the checklist has been completed. Please subscribe to learn of our future videos. Thank you.